Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to do a separate video to go over all of the earnings, so let's get straight into the data for this video. Then we'll take a look at the charts as well as my results for the day and my thoughts going into tomorrow's session. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin, let's get started. So starting off with fear and greed, we did see a slight move higher. We had a 64 yesterday up to 67. You can see it on the timeline, just a little bit of a pop, pretty interesting. And then looking at momentum, still in extreme greed, stock price strength and breadth have been in greed. You can see breadth stepped down a little bit yesterday. We looked at it on the charts yesterday. It'll be interesting to see what it looks like today. And then options still in extreme greed, volatility dipping back down. With the rally today and then earnings after hours, safe haven demand, still in extreme greed. And then junk bond demand back into neutral. Pretty interesting to watch that continue to oscillate with yields on the back of the FOMC yesterday. Seems like it's settled out a little bit. Overall, definitely mixed signals, but the biggest one here is still in greed, and we are still at market tops. Moving over to seasonality, you can see the first part of the month is supposed to be pretty strong, and then we kind of level out towards the end of the month with potentially a little bit of weakness across markets into that last week of the month. So really expecting some strength here based on seasonality. We are still struggling in markets. We'll see if earnings can drive us higher. Again, I'll talk about the earnings in a separate video. Let's get through the data. Speaking of earnings, let's move over to the calendars here for just a moment. You can see just about everybody beat all the major players, at least. Honeywell did miss on revenue just a little bit. And there were a couple of misses on revenue, but the major players all beating on the top and bottom lines. Merck actually turning a profit when they were supposed to have a little bit of a loss there. So everything looking good for them. And then don't forget tomorrow you do have ExxonMobil, Avi, Chevron. So those big oil heavy hitters, as well as Church and Dwight for those dividend investors out there. So overall earnings still doing quite well, although there was a little bit more red here today on the revenue side. Moving over to the economic calendar, you can see Eurozone unemployment rate flat, Eurozone inflation a little bit higher than expected, which is interesting, not what you would want to see. And then looking at all of the economic factors, you can see these all came in better than expected. So that's good to see. We're, we're seeing all of these in green, which is good. ISM manufacturing PMI came in below 50, which is not great. You can see a couple of revisions down also, not super great. And then you have the Fed balance sheet selling off quite a lot this week, $47 billion, pretty big sell off for them relative to what I've been seeing. And then let's look at tomorrow. Don't forget, there is tons and tons of data coming out tomorrow, pre-market at 8.30. So you got non-farm payrolls, average hourly wages, unemployment rate, obviously a big one. It is expected to step up a little bit from the previous. And then you have all of the Michigan numbers. Those don't have a huge impact, but it is fun to watch and keep those in the back of your mind. So mostly unemployment data, non-farm payrolls coming out tomorrow. Those are definitely going to push markets around. Moving over to Max Payne, currently sitting at 483. Options ticked up slightly. Put call ratio dipped down a little bit, which was interesting. Top of the puts, 491, 492. And we are right in that range already. So that would indicate that we're probably topped out. 495, again, earnings are going to drive us higher based on what I've seen so far. Meta and Amazon breaking out. So we'll see if we can get up to that 495 mark. 480 continues to be the bottom with that massive put wall. Moving over to markets, looking at the S&Ps, you can see we did rally after hours yesterday and then pre-market. I did expect that. I thought we'd get up to the 21 EMA and reject. Sure enough, we did, but then we rallied right back to it and broke out. And once that 21 broke, then we were pretty much off to the races for the day. So that was the critical point. 10 o'clock candle, broke the 21 hourly, rallied much, much higher. Makes sense. And then looking at the daily chart, notice that we did not see a step back towards bullish on the day. We'll see how that holds tomorrow. You can see that massive jump on the earnings closed at 489 and then 492 is the current price. That would be an all-time high above those wicks from 29 and 30 January. So continues to break here. We'll see if it can hold those gains. Again, we'll take a look at those charts, but absolutely massive breaks on Amazon and Meta. In terms of levels, 488.68, that's the level I was watching. We did close above it during the session. And then above that, obviously, there's no major levels. Below, if we break back down, 482.75. Moving over to the NASDAQ, very similar thesis. You saw this higher low materializing started to break up. I ended up repurchasing my Qs right in this zone when it was about even with this previous high in the pre-market. And then once that broke, like I said, pretty much off to the 
races at that point. So it is worth noting that the structure is quite different here. However, you can see 42475 broke. Then you have 428.58. That is this most recent triple top that we saw before the breakdown. Yesterday, I was pretty bearish on markets. I thought we would give back more of this most recent rally. At this point, this looks more like a double top, a longer term double top, not just the shorter term one that we saw. So you had this initial top, a midpoint here now. If we get back into this zone tomorrow and it tops out and can't break above, then you should be looking for a much bigger breakdown, in my opinion. Even with the bullish candle that we saw, you can see still bearish momentum on the daily chart, continues to step back towards bearish. It'll be interesting to see how markets open. Again, with that bigger spike up, you can see back into the middle of this range. So you do have to respect the earnings. That catalyst can be aggressive, but in terms of structure, this still looks like a top midpoint coming for a double top or a lower high setup and then a bigger breakdown. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow. Russell dipped in the pre-market, actually made a lower low, which was interesting, not the same as the other charts. Those charts had a higher low, lower low on the Russell, but then it rallied through, made a higher high, got it back above my 195.15 level, so still bullish there, still holding the same position. We'll look at my positions later, but still looks good. Held that level, want to see it rally up into that 198 area. That is where we broke down previously, so that's going to be a critical level. If it breaks down from there again, then you would expect much lower lows. So critical point if we rally into this area. Otherwise, right now, looks like consolidation. And then looking at the Dow just for a moment, hit that 21 EMA, held it on the four-hour chart, right back to these previous highs. The Dow continues to look strong. If it breaks out here, that's going to be interesting. But right now, everything looks okay on the Dow right at that top. Moving over to the equal weights. I haven't talked about these in a while. They've really been consolidating in this range. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit so you get a better perspective. And see, we rallied up. We've been chopping sideways in this range. But I wanted to bring it up here because that after hours price action, you can see on the earnings, we are breaking above that range. So above this, you got 160.31. Let's go ahead and zoom out to the weekly chart. You can see where we're at in terms of price action historically. That 160.31 level is kind of the wick high just before that all time high. So if you push to that level and it can hold, that's your next price target, about $1.30 higher. Seems like it could get there. That's about 1% higher. And then looking at all-time highs up around 164.87. Again, this is the equal weighted S&Ps. So we're starting to see the rest of the markets kind of catch up to the rally. We'll see what happens here. But right now, looks like a little bit of a breakout looking for those upper levels. Moving over to Apple and Tesla. Apple had earnings, had a strong day, 1.33%. Rallied right to the level, closed basically right on top of it, 186.81. And then with earnings, it actually fell a little bit. Let's look at it on the hourly chart. You can see through big wicks to both of those major levels. It is rallying a little bit, but that first candle was down. So showing a little bit of weakness, nothing crazy here on Apple. I did hear that they did show a little bit of revenue growth for the first time in four quarters. So a little bit of growth there, but not enough to drive the stock higher the way that we're seeing across other markets. And then looking at Tesla just for a moment, you can see we're still in this sideways chop after that big earnings drop off. This was a pretty significant drop from its most recent highs. So going from 264.68 all the way to current levels down around 185. So consolidation, we'll see if it can find at least a short term bounce from here. But right now it seems to be holding in the same range, momentum ticking towards bullish a little bit. Maybe look for a retrace back up to maybe 205 right at the bottom of this consolidation. That would be pretty aggressive, honestly. That's a retrace of almost the whole earnings. Probably not that aggressive. You got the 9 EMA sitting at 194.65 or so. That could be interesting. And even that gives you a couple of dollars of upside. So short term bullish here on Tesla, but just keep in mind this bigger downtrend. Moving over to Amazon and Meta. Obviously, these are taking off. These are the biggest earners here today. Amazon up 7.2%, got above this previous high, broke that first level, touched the next one at 174.23, pulled back a little bit now. Momentum, obviously bullish. This is not all time highs here for Amazon. Let's go ahead and look at it on the weekly chart just for a moment, give you some perspective. All time highs are up around 188. We're not quite there yet. Touch that first level. You can see where that level was established here going back to August of 20, October of 20, and then we chopped through it a lot in the middle of 21 before breaking down. Now we're back there. We'll see if it can take out those all-time highs. In fact, let's go ahead and add a level at the all-time high. Put it right about there. 188.61 seems to be right on the spot. So a couple of levels to the upside still to go on Amazon. Obviously, everything's still bullish there. 
and then looking at Meta, this is all time highs. You can see it here. We are well above this previous high and we are up massive 450. You can see it here on the four hour chart. Went from down around 394 up to 450. Obviously the news of a dividend. This is their first dividend. They said they were going to pay. The news of that dividend is obviously massive for the stock. So that's gonna send it much, much higher, massive gain. You can see the candle up 14% on an already massive company. Moving over to staples and discretionary. Staples on a burner today. So we got 2.04%, took out the 74 level. 75.40 is your next one. Big bullish momentum, big volume. Everything looks good on staples. And then looking at discretionaries, pretty strong day there too, almost 2%. Did just barely get above this kind of downtrend structure that I was watching. Momentum seems to be tipping towards bullish eventually. Did have strong volume down yesterday. And then you got even stronger volume up here today. And then you can see after hours, obviously up massive on the news. I'm sure Amazon falls into this discretionary portfolio. And with that big move, we're getting a push up to 178. 180.10 is your next level. And then I do have some short-term resistance around 178.45. Let's go ahead and extend that out right in that same range. So a little bit of short-term resistance here, but the bigger level is 180.10. Moving over to breadth, we did see breadth pick up a little bit here today. Fully engulfed on the 20-day average, which is interesting. So that's a higher low setup if it can hold and rally through. Momentum back towards bullish. 50-day average, however, wicked a much lower low and then recouped at least a little bit of yesterday's losses. We'll see if that can bounce back tomorrow but right now 50 day average still showing that breadth is weakening 20 day average showing a little bit of a pop still so short term bullish medium term still looking a little bit more bearish moving over to yields you can see both of these moved a little bit lower today two year yield down just very small 0.05 but 10 year down 0.87. This trend continues here to the downside. We hit that 55 EMA couldn't hold it and then broke back down. Now we're looking at these previous lows around 3.78 and then my level here, 3.75. So I really thought we would get back towards normalized conditions. We have not been able to do that. Now we are going more inverted with the 10-year falling a little bit faster than the two-year, which is interesting. Momentum, even more bullish on the 10-year. So that does concern me a little bit. I really thought normalized conditions would be coming, but that could be showing there's a little bit of economic weakness to come over the next year or so. Something to watch for. And we'll see how it pans out. Moving over to the dollar. Dollar fell throughout the session. Had a short-term bottom, rallied into the overnight session, and then in the morning, pre-market, and then throughout the session, dipped all the way down to support. So interesting, still in the same consolidation. A little bit interesting that it closed on its low here, right at the 21 EMA. Momentum starting to fade here. RSI, big break through the SMA. So that's a little bit bearish. Still holding the level at 102.98. This level holds. Again, still could be bullish. You can see short-term momentum starting to tick back towards bullish from this support area, showing a little bit of structure at that level. So it really could go either way, still in consolidation. Critical point though, going into tomorrow's session. Moving over to JNK and TLT. JNK did sell off. We'll see if this finds a little bit of rally tomorrow based on the earnings and potential rally for markets. You really wanna see those moving in the same direction and that's not what we're seeing right now. JNK has been down three days in a row, whereas markets were up a little bit here today. And then TLT, we talked about it yesterday, had a clear breakout yesterday, continuation with a gap up and rally. Probably has a little bit more in it up to that 100 level. I don't know if we're gonna break that level or not, but should get to that zone at least in the short term. Then we'll see if it's either a double top, but lots of momentum, lots of volume on these steps higher. Seems like people are moving into bonds, a little bit safer assets, especially with the major rallies that we're seeing. Moving over to volatility, move index rallying pretty aggressively. Interesting, closed right on its high. Momentum bullish, RSI bullish. So a little bit of volatility there in the bond market. And then looking at the VIX, you can see we did hold pretty well. We did close higher than yesterday's open, but it's an inside candle. Got almost to my 1470 level and it did close just above this downtrend line. It's a pretty long-term downtrend line that I've been watching for a long time. You can see it's right at that level. So holding there, again, higher than yesterday's open. Really, I still think this is going to push up to 1650. Once all of these earnings are done, I'm not sure how many more catalysts there's going to be to keep markets at these prices. See how it plays out. Right now, earnings is still doing a good job based on Amazon and Meta. But again, this structure still looks bullish on the VIX. Moving over to my accounts, you can see I do have all of my covered calls here still. Starting off with the Russell, you can see 191 still for $9, still holding that same position. Small profit on the call, small profit on the share. 
shares. Max profit still up around 102. Plenty of room, still sitting fine on that one. And then looking at the Qs, 405 is the call. So still deep in the money, 2150. So that puts my max profit at 426.50. And you can see with the after hours price action, we're just a little bit below that level. Massive rally on the day. So still sitting okay. If it continues to break out tomorrow, we'll see if I make any adjustments. Right now, I think I'm going to sit on it. I still think we see that medium term weakness like we're seeing in the 50 day average for breadth. And then looking at TQQ, like I said, I did purchase those shares. I had the puts going into the day. So I made money on those puts and then I bought the shares here and that's up a little bit after hours as well up to almost 56 down a little bit from $56 as we continue to be in the money on that position I'll roll it out to next week see if we can make a little bit of money there also but right now still in a good position might try to roll it up and out to next week see what happens overall neutral to bullish based on the earnings catalyst let me know down in the comments section what you think of the charts and these massive pops we're seeing on earnings. Can this rally continue? Or is this more of a catalyst into a shakeout? And we're looking for that medium term dip below. Let me know down in the comments section what you think. Otherwise, like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. And make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.